fine. <laughs> yeah, let's go. A little bit off west. Okay. Hang on a minute. There, that works. Okay, this meeting is being recorded. Good morning and welcome to morning devotions with the community of St. Andrews in Glenwood, Maryland. My name is Bob Bryant and I will serve as leader today. If you are new to this service, know that you are welcome to participate fully. We're recording the service so that others can access it at a time convenient for them. Our two volunteers are Mike, volunteer one, and Betsy, volunteer two. Let us begin. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, hallelujah. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen, hallelujah. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Let us adore him. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Okay, I'm going to read this morning's section uh, from the Sermon on the Mount entitled, Do to Others. This is the famous saying, in everything do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law of the prophets. The golden rule is, in various forms, found across the globe, and its benefits are well known. Less familiar is the line that follows in the gospel, for this is the law and the prophets. By law and prophets, her capitalization, Jesus is referring to the Torah, the Pentateuch, and the prophets, former and later. At the time of Jesus, the third part of the Jewish canon, the writings, was still in flux. For example, the book of Esther has never been found among the Dead Sea Scrolls. Jesus thus summarizes the scripture of Israel by the golden rule. This is not his only summary. When a lawyer, in Matthew, a scribe in Mark, asks him which commandments in the law is the greatest. Jesus responds, you shall love, your, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. He concludes on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Thus, the scriptures of Israel can be summarized in two ways, the golden rule and love of God, love of neighbor. But a summary is not sufficient. The summary is the guide through which the rest of Torah and Jesus' teachings should be filtered. Jesus himself cites other commandments that he expects his disciples to follow, including in the extensions of the Sermon on the Mount. Without the full biblical context, especially the gospel's interest in higher righteousness, loving enemies and avoiding hypocrisy, the golden rule is easily deformed. A missionary might think, 
because I want to be a Christian and would therefore want to be disabused of my previous non-Christian culture. Therefore, I will not only take indigenous children away from their parents, but also forbid them from speaking their own language and worshiping their own gods. In evangelizing, in being the light of the world and to the world, one does well to show what is right with one's own tradition, not what is wrong with someone else's. One evangelizes by love, not by compulsion. There's an alternative version of the golden rule called the silver rule, and so perceived to be of slightly less value. In the context of instruction to his son Tobias, Tobit advises inter alia, do not keep over until the next day the wages of those who work for you, but pay them at once. If you serve God, you will receive payment. Watch yourself, my son, in everything you do, and discipline yourself in all your conduct. And what you hate, do not do to anyone. Do not drink wine to excess or let drunkenness go with you on your way. For Tobit, the silver rule is proverbial wisdom. Recall the story from the introduction of Hilla for interaction of the rule. When a Gentile demanded, convert me on condition that you teach me the entire Torah while I am standing on one foot, Hillel responded, that which is hateful for you, do not do to another. That is the entire Torah and the rest is its interpretation. Go study. <laughs> the silver rule, if taken out of its Jewish context, can also be deformed. Don't do to others can be an excuse for inaction. But in its context, we know that it is a touchstone or a canon within a canon by which all the other mitzvot or commandments should be understood. In these various interact, inter, I'm having trouble with that word, interactions, interactions right. by Jesus. Tobit and Hillel, the ruler, never stands alone. It is always accompanied by and understood in the context of the rest of scripture. Okay. What do you see in this that strikes you this morning? I like the fact that she says, <clears throat> the rest is its interpretation. Go study. <laughs> yes. That's very true. The rest is left as an exercise for the reader. Yeah. I hear a command to go do. Do. Yeah, do well, unto others as you would have them do unto you. And, and then I see the word everything. There are no exceptions. It's easy to be selective, you know, <laughs> so I, any other thoughts about it? We just have to be careful that we don't deform it, you know, like they were, she's talking, giving you the example of missionaries and what they did to native children. Yeah. In the, in the interests of Christianity, you know, they thought they were doing the right thing. We have to be careful. Yeah. History is pretty ugly in that regard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Missionaries in general, you know, are, you know, it's, you have to be careful. But she says, when you evangelize, you need to do it through love. Um, now she also says, you know, show what's good and great and strong within your tradition rather than uh, decrying or uh, uh, what speaking down about other traditions. Mm -hmm. There's such richness in other traditions. I think we've ignored through time. You no, know? there's a lot to learn from other traditions. And I think that sometimes the Old Testament denigrates other traditions you know they talk a lot about the high altars of all the other 
traditions and how you need to take them down and um well, they have you, you know the context of, of the early uh, Jewish people, the early Hebrews. Uh, they were aliens in a strange land. They were surrounded by other um, idols, other gods, people worshiping other gods, and they were afraid of losing their identity. They were afraid of being subsumed by um, the, the local uh, gods, and and so. They reacted strongly to that and, and you know, demanded um, complete fealty of, of their people. And, uh, you know. You see that in Israel today. Yeah, yeah. So there's a fine line, you know, where, how, how do you tread that line between keeping your identity and respecting other people? There's a there's a fine line there. Uh, I think there are many uh, faith traditions that struggle with uh, uh, preserving the purity, their perceived purity of their ideals. You now the uh, Amish, uh, Mormons, um, you now many others seek to close themselves off from the rest of society in order to protect themselves. Even Orthodox Jews, to a large extent. So she obviously doesn't fit that mold. He's yeah. obviously highly engaged. Right. We need to be aware of not doing that ourselves and how we're perceived. Right. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to be comfortable in your own group, isn't it? Mm. Yes. Usually. <laughs> Depends on the group, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. It's even more painful if you're not, at least for me. That's right. That's right. That's wounding. To make a, a big mistake among friends is very painful. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Any other comments? A big learning I had last week that keeps floating in my head is meeting people where they are. We're called to do that at every level. Yeah, that was, uh, that's an echo of the class we took last summer too. Um, meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. Let us affirm our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Oh, I have a problem. Yes. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. 
Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, in having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite your prayer requests at this time. For Jim, for Kate and Sandy, Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.